Hi, I'm Josh from the Fort Worth trailer here for another video where we just make stuff. Today I'm going to make a one of my uh, my favorite projects. It is making a Nerf gun into something a little bit more realistic. Although this one's not very realistic. This is my steampunk version, but this is a normal Nerf gun. We're going to turn it into something that looks like this or something similar to this and uh, something that you could use for a costume or just at your office because your Nerf gun is going to be better than your cube mates. All right. So this, uh, this is how the Nerf guns come from the factory. They, uh, they come packaged like this. Now you buy these from Amazon. And I choose to get the hassle-free packaging from Amazon because it comes like this. And I, I, I make these and I sell them back to other people. And this way I've got a decent box when I ship it back out to the other people. So this is a Nerf strong arm. And you may be surprised, this is what it looks like, if you didn't know, when it comes out of the package. I'm going to put the box over here. There you go, there's my first blooper. This is what it looks like when it comes out of the package. Um, it comes with six darts, it comes with an instruction manual, and it comes packaged in. Uh, this hassle-free packaging that Amazon sends there's not a lot of frills, uh, so it's actually easier to they're easier to unbox. The ones that come from Target or you know the store, Walmart, wherever the toy store that you get it at, um, they're going to have a lot more twist ties and a little bit harder to take take out. I like this because it's simple, so I try to keep the box as intact as possible because once again, this is actually gonna to go to a customer when I'm done. So I take it out. I don't unwrap these and I leave this with everything because when, I, when the customer gets this, I want them to think that this is like a brand new gun that they're getting from the store. So I set this aside. And this is our gun. So, First thing we got to do is we're going to take it apart so that we can get uh, expose all of the places that are going to need uh, to be painted. Then we are going to scuff it up a little bit. We're going to put a coat of primer on it. We're going to put a coat of base coat on it. And then we're going to go to town with all of the different colors and um, embellishments that we're going to put on it. I'm going to show you how to do all of that kind of stuff when we get down to it. And in this particular case, it's finished off with some inscriptions on the cylinder of some names. And that is for a specific character, for a specific um, cosplay costume that uh, this my customer wants it for. And uh, you don't have to do the lettering. It, it's gonna look like a, an authentic gun when it's done, but uh, he wanted that specifically for his costume. So first thing we do is, is we worry about safety always. Um, I know not everybody takes the time to do this, but I, I do every day. I, I always wear gloves. Uh, buy the kind you like. I like good old-fashioned latex. I know some people are allergic to latex, but if you're not allergic to latex, latex is great because it uh, you can still have great feel and touch with your fingers. You don't lose a lot of touch with these on. Uh, they conform to your fingers pretty well and um, they also will allow you to keep using your phone because uh, the latex will let the electromagnetic forces go through. So that's a plus. And let's see. Because I'm wearing decent clothes, I always put this on. So we'll get started. Uh, I, was, I also like wearing gloves. I didn't used to. I used to work on cars and all sorts of stuff. And I never wore gloves. But you know what? 
It makes cleanup way easier. And then the rest of the night, I don't look like I'm an auto mechanic with uh, stuff in, in, in my fingernails that you can never get out. So <clears throat> it's just a good idea. Let's see. So good rule of thumb here. If I get something nice and soft to put all of these on, I have to give a big shout out to um, Adam Savage and his tested videos on YouTube that really got me into this and got me thinking about this. Not only that, kind of helped te teach me the first techniques about how to do this. And it's great. One of the things he suggested is there's a lot of screws. Now, in this case, they're all the same size, so it's not that critical. But in some of these guns, they get very complicated, and each one of the screws is a different size. And if you take them apart in a pattern around the outside, and you do the same thing every time, and you start in the same place every time, and you lay your screws out on the paper, then when you go back, you put it together the same way, you'll know which screw goes into which hole automatically just because they're in order. This is something that I do. I have a little screwdriver, but I get this, uh, this is a neodymium magnet or a rare earth magnet, and I stick it to the screwdriver, and it makes the screwdriver partly um, magnetic by itself, but then also, like I get that out, it just sticks. It's great to have a magnet, even if it's not on your screwdriver, when you're dealing with small screws like this. So uh, the first few I did of this, I didn't, I didn't take the care to take it apart. And unfortunately then, you know, underneath here, there are a lot of places that I missed. And as I started uh, taking the gun back inside into the house, realizing how many places I missed. So it's important to take this step and go methodical. It really doesn't take a whole lot of time. I think that uh, I'm, I should be able to do this in just a couple of videos. Um, most of the time is waiting for the paint to dry. And that one is not coming. That's interesting. I'll get this one first. What's amazing about these Nerf guns is it's hard to tell because this is, you know, formed plastic. And, uh... It's all in one piece, all this blue color, and they, they put a little bit of this white on there. They put a mask down, spray paint it real quick. You don't see the detail. There's actually a ton of detail in this piece. All the screws and everything, but you don't see it. And you won't really see it until we blank it all out, paint it gray, paint it white, or black, you know, our base coat. And then you start to see, oh wait, there's actually a lot of detail. All right, so now there's the first piece. I'm gonna take this off. Put this over here, ready to uh, paint. And the back side is held on with the spring. So I'm gonna wait on that. Some of these are very complicated on the inside. And I, a couple of times I had to get a second example because I couldn't get the first one back together. So I had to take apart a second example to see how it was uh, put back together you think oh I'll remember this and then you know I don't finish it until tomorrow or the next day because I'm waiting for the paint to dry and by then I've totally forgotten so yeah just go ahead and take every screw out oh don't lose screws and don't lose springs there are tiny springs inside these things and they will go flying another good use for a magnet is because if I can't see it on the floor I can at least sweep the floor with my magnet and most likely I'm going to catch it. So, let's see. I have an outdoor shop in Texas. It gets very hot. So, um, let's see. There we go. There's one half. This is a little thing that uh, holds on the accessories onto the rail. And there's a little screw uh, spring that goes with it. I have never put those back in. You can. You can try to paint this and put it back in. You can put it back in orange, but it's going to stand out because everything else will be painted. Uh, in this case, we're probably not going to be using any accessories up there, so I don't bother putting it back in. That's totally on you. So here's the, in this particular case, Nerf Strong Arm, these are the pieces that come out. So there is this, the front. 
the cylinder, which this piece comes apart, but this one does not, so that one stays. All right, this is an internal piece. You do see this back part right here. Otherwise, you don't see any of the rest. But because you see this part, I'm going to go ahead and put it over here to be painted. Here's one of those tiny screws. Or, not screws, excuse me. Springs. This spring goes in there. Really tiny, easy to lose. I'm going to keep it safe over here. All right. The trigger is held on by another screw. It's the only screw on this gun. It's the only screw on the inside. And it's clearly different than the rest of the screws, so you shouldn't get it mixed up. There's also a spring. Now this spring is actually hard to take off. If I pulled it, it would pop off, but it's pretty hard to take off, so I don't take it off. And in fact, I hang this somewhere else. It needs to be hung up so that uh, There we go, so I can get all the different sides of it. Um, now, this part right here just lifts out as one piece. That's great, some of them are not that easy. And this is where this spring comes. It's, it's just lift and pop off of here. I don't take it off the screw. One less spring that I have to worry about losing if I keep it there. Now, don't bend the spring, be careful with it. But uh, I leave it there, it gets painted with the rest of it, but it's no big deal. So, take this. Put it over here with the rest of them. Now, I do put this back in. Sometimes I don't, depending on the model, but mostly I put it back in because you see these parts right here, they're orange. And I want them to get painted over. Any visible, any exposed parts, uh, I want them to get painted back over. But I don't necessarily want a lot of paint on the inside, so I'm not gonna paint it separately because that would gum it all up. In fact, enough paint gets on the inside as is that it kind of gums it up a little bit and you have to work it a few times before you, uh, you you work that off. So, as you can see, those parts right there are orange and I want those to be painted black with the rest of it. Uh, now, I'm gonna put it back together. I'm only gonna use two screws. Generally speaking, I'll do two on opposite sides now this is where kind of it flies out of the window, your hole, if you put them all in order, you have to be real careful about picking which ones you're gonna use and putting them back in the right order. But either way, I only use two. It's just to hold it together while I paint it. I do wanna paint this together as one unit. So now uh, it's ready to be scuffed. So I usually take a medium, um, medium grit sanding block, uh, maybe 80 or 100 grit sandpaper, and real loosely, although it's okay if you leave scratches, because you know, we're weathering this, and a real gun's gonna have scratches and scuff marks on it. So uh, just scuff it up, it doesn't have to be real bad, you know, it, just something. Uh, we're gonna use a really good primer, so it's not that big of an issue. But if you're not using quality paint, it becomes a bigger issue. It won't stick. This is ABS plastic, and just about nothing sticks to ABS. So uh, that's why we scuff this up. It just helps the paint stick a little bit, and then the rest of the paint sticks to itself. So anyways, we'll scuff that up. This is where I always forget. Don't forget to then go back and scuff up your uh, your other pieces now this is uh, the this is the cylinder it sticks out so even at this point I might say hey this could get scuffed this way right sideways now don't do it all over but just a random scuff in the wrong direction and that may show through the paint and then it looks more realistic so even at this stage you're already starting to to give this gun a history, uh, provide sort of a narrative, like that there's some story, even if we don't know what that story is, that there's some story behind this weapon and that it uh, didn't just come off the factory floor, but it's been in somebody's possession. Uh, this is really important because this is supposed to be a steampunk, old, antique, and for this character, 
uh, it's, it's old and beat up too. So um, get all these parts. Some of them are more important than others. This one's not as visible. So, but it's also really smooth and shiny. Let's see. Now, some people have asked me to rub this off. In fact, this care, this uh, customer wants me to rub it off. I usually hesitate to do it. One, because real guns have imprints on them. I carried an M14, or an M4, and an M16, excuse me, an M4 in the Army for a long time, and right on the side, it's stamped Colt, and it has a lot of warning written on it. So it is authentic to have writing on the side of your gun. He wanted me to rub it off. The problem here is this is textured. And if I sand this off, I'm gonna lose some of this texture. So I have to be really careful. Now this is plastic and it shouldn't be very hard to just sand the Nerf off. Um, it's pretty deep. I also like it because that Nerf, um, that's a good place for weathering, you know. Lettering like that uh, picks up grime real well. And uh, you can add a little bit more maybe of your color into it, like rust if you've got steel or green if you've got copper. you got, you know, or brass or something and the copper is starting to, to corrode out of it. And, and you don't want to put too much green, but you put some in there and it looks real good. See, I rubbed off a lot of the, uh, the texture. So I'm gonna have to make it even by rubbing off texture everywhere else. So, you know, the next time I do this, I might tell the customer if he asks, but in this particular case, it's not a good idea to remove the Nerf. Sometimes it's not a big deal, you can't even tell. So, sometimes it's hard to tell when you've got it all down. As you can see, even this goes pretty quickly. I can smell the burning uh, ABS plastic from the friction. To go faster, of course, you could use a higher grit, but then I would come back with the lower grit to smooth it out so that your gouges don't look so big and it doesn't look like you've just rubbed off a, uh, a mark. Let's see, that's tough. I'm gonna get me some sandpaper real quick. Some actual sandpaper. So, this is 120 grit, but I should be able to get my finger down just in the right spots. So, that's pretty good. So I'm gonna leave it there. I think I lost my second camera, which is great. So, um, I'm gonna do this too. There's some warnings on the side here. Sometimes I take those off also. I don't take off all of the writing. Um, only weird writing that doesn't look authentic. Um, this writing happens to, I think, sort of look authentic to if you've ever looked at a real gun uh, no, maybe not Victorian cosplay but uh, modern guns so yeah there we go all gone that was easier. Not near as deep. Oh, move that over here. Put these over here. So, that's pretty much it um, for that. The next thing that we do, yeah, clean it off. Uh, get a towel, clean it off, and we're going to put primer on it. And um, we will do that in the next video. So, thank you very much for watching. 
Uh, come back for more videos. We will finish this in the next few episodes and hopefully move on to bigger and better things. Please uh, like us. Um, go to our Facebook page, like us. Please leave comments and subscribe to our page. Appreciate you very much. Thank you.